The 40 millimeter focal length has a unique history in visual arts, one where I feel it hasn't gotten its proper credit. Think back to some of your favorite movies and cinematographers. The 40 millimeter equivalent was a popular choice across countless films, be it 28 millimeter on a Super 35 sensor, APS-C's twin format for filmmaking, or 40 on true 35 millimeter film. History is decorated with this immersive perspective. 40 is often said to be the absolute truest representation of what the human eye sees, even more so than 50 millimeter when it comes to photography. And of course, everybody sees the world differently, but I'm inclined to agree. And what better of an application would a true to life focal length like 40 millimeter thrive than in street photography. This focal length along with close approximations has been with me at multiple points during my journey. As a wide-eyed beginner, 45 millimeter urged me to move in closer. I learned how to respectfully enter a scene, communicate my intent, and capture portraits with subject-driven focus, but also environmental substance. The photographs I wanted to make required me to grow. Street portraits eventually became a shared experience, not just a transactional, hey, can I take your photo, and then me anxiously scurrying away. Following that was last year, after my first bout with 28 millimeter. 40 reintroduced me to the properties of compression and how to utilize distance again. And while I love that 28 practically has a gravitational pull that draws you into scenes, it was refreshing to not have so much of a physical presence in what was going on. But now, in the present day, it's reminding me that you don't have to rely on extremes to communicate a story. Where 35's environmental context might put you at risk of losing your specifics, and 50 can sometimes suppress your proximity to your subjects, 40 millimeter puts you in a position to photograph a wide scene while still maintaining a clearly identified focus. To be as far as the outer edges of the mix, yet still participate as an unobtrusive observer. To be able to accurately photograph from the hip one moment, then take a flattering headshot the next. It almost doesn't make sense how well it does in all of these situations. 35's environmental context and 50's subject-driven DNA brilliantly fused together into a focal length that often presents itself as a lens no heavier than 100 grams. 40 millimeter lenses, no matter what camera system you're photographing on, are often so small that it doesn't even look like your camera has a lens on it. Now I hold my right to photograph the world and express myself as paramount. But that being said, I'm hyper aware of how I present myself to people. And though their reaction is completely out of my control, I prefer people not to be intimidated by the size of my gear. And knowing that a 40 millimeter pancake will never stick out as distracting while I'm out is a massive plus. The simple designs of these pancake lenses do often leave out qualities such as the latest autofocusing motors and even in some cases aperture rings and weather resistance, but that trade-off might be worth it to a lot of you. The beta side, for many, size is everything, and you simply cannot get smaller than a pancake lens. And that quality alone is, is what would make you think that these would be the most popular options for not just street photography, but street portraits as well. But portraiture is where people begin to collectively write 40 millimeter lenses off as that 2.8 aperture just is not enough for a lot of people and I totally get that but the 27 2.8 from Fuji no matter what version you're using performs excellently for portraits and provides plenty enough light gathering for any time before sundown but all of these reasons are why I would consider 40 millimeters the stargate to wider lenses for any street photographer who's used 50 and longer but needs an easier introduction to wider lenses I'm empathetic to the jump from 50 to 35 being intimidating a lot of photographers pick up that 35 millimeter lens and simply don't know where to go with it I was wondering of them it was really challenging at first with 40 you keep most of the characteristics that 50 presents to you you get some distance you get some compression and while that's all going on you're simultaneously being introduced to the world of excitement that 35 has in store for you you still have to get a little bit closer to your subjects and you still have some more additional context it challenges you to learn how to move in and have a footprint on the events going on but not by any kind of force but at the same time, it does take away what is sometimes a crutch, using hyper compression and distance in such a way that the context of our city becomes lost and photos end up feeling impersonal. It's the perfect in-betweener. It's not all of the context you get with 35, and it's not all of the reach and compression you get with 50, but in a pinch, it does the jobs of both extremely well. It's a jack of both trades. Whether or not it's a master of either depends on your skill set and usage as a photographer. But all of those reasons are why I love 40 millimeter. Thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.